Judge Foley, if I ever have a problem with the IRS, I'm going to call you. <laughs> and uh, Dick, you uh, made reference to Moses and his humility. Have you heard about the man who was given a medal for being so humble? They took it away from him because he wore it. Your comments about humility uh, hit home. Uh, all of us have a problem with it. You mentioned judges and those in high positions uh, sometimes get uh, kind of taken with themselves. That's a human condition, and I think it is almost universal. And as I read the, the scriptures, both the Old and New Test Testament, it's obvious to me that God hates that sin maybe more than any other because it keeps coming up. And if you read those Old Testament stories, you see evidence of it in places where you wouldn't think. Um, Hezekiah lived this life, King Hezekiah, this life of, of a godly uh, principle all the way through his life, came down to the end of his life, and there's not a smudge on his record. And he came down to die, and he couldn't accept that, turned his face to the wall, and he cried, and he begged God for 15 more years. You remember that story? And in those 15 years, he displeased God. Do you remember why? What did he do? He brought the Egyptians, the enemy, in and showed them his gold and all the things that he had. Now, that doesn't seem like one of the biggies in the, the sins that a person might commit when there's murder and there's rape and there's every bad thing. God was displeased by that. Why? Because the man should have died 15 years ago and God allowed him to have an extension on his uh, life and he's bragging about what he has accumulated. That offended God. He is, in a godly way, very sensitive to our self-importance. And I'll have to tell you, I, we had about 15 reporters who came in to focus on the family when I was there. These are all secular reporters. You would know many of them. And we took them on a tour. And I'm walking around the ministry of focus on the family, which God has given, and we're looking at... Uh, pins on maps of where we're hurt and all this stuff. And I was thinking, what's the difference here? These people are not, for the most part, godly men that were there. I don't even know what their faith was. But they came there to see what was there. And I'm taking them around and showing them. And I mean to tell you that that scripture... Uh, came up before me because pride is such a, a heinous crime in God's eyes. Now, it's not a crime, but it's a sin. Um, I have something to tell you. Uh, Shirley mentioned she made reference to the president's uh, uh, proclamation about 30 minutes ago. We got his proclamation for prayer. <laughs> And let me tell you what else. All 50 governors of the country, all 50 have signed either proclamations or statement, statements calling for prayer. Is that right, John? Yeah. Also relevant to this moment, the Supreme Court of Colorado chose this day to take testimony and briefs and hearings about whether or not it is constitutional for the governor of Colorado to issue a proclamation. They are at this moment, as I understand it, they're making a decision. If, the, if their decision is that it is unconstitutional 
for a governor to do this. It is binding to every, every court in Colorado and could begin a process of erosion of the support that prayer has had throughout the country. So this is something that uh, we really do need to be in prayer about. The talk about arrogant. This has been going on since 1775. As we heard last night, 34 of 44 presidents have called for National Days of Prayer. There have been more than two, uh, 1,200 such proclamations in the history of this country. And 50 state governors are calling for days of prayer. And this little court is sitting there in judgment over all of us. So, uh, Judge Foley, thank you for being a godly representative of the judiciary. I have to keep my time very short uh, this morning, but there's something else I want to say to you. I have uh, been here to uh, sit, by the way, by the way, Shirley sitting down here. Uh, I don't have a problem with humility because God gave me Shirley and <laughs> she keeps me in line. But uh, we have, um, uh, what now, I was about, oh yes, I want to say something. I, in those 20 years, I have never made any kind of political statement, and I won't do it today. This is not what we're here for, to talk about uh, who we elect and, uh, you know, parties and all that. We just don't do that. That's not what the National Day of Prayer is all about. But something we are all about is morality. And there has been a, an issue that has come up that you need to know about. Uh, President Obama, before he was elected, made it very clear that he wanted to be the abortion president. He didn't pull any, you know, he didn't, didn't make any bones about it, that this is something that he really was going to promote and support. And he has done that. And in a sense, he is the abortion president. And uh, early on in his first term, uh, he uh, announced through uh, Health and Human Services that every American who gets insurance, which should be almost all of us, uh, would have to pay a surcharge. Uh, it started out a dollar a month, so that's $12 a year. I don't care how much it is, but $12 a year that would go skyrocketing. You know everything, every tax does, right, Judge? And, uh, <laughs> Uh, and that we would have to pay it, and that would go toward the support of abortion. And it would go to Planned Parenthood. And in fact, his budget that he submitted this year uh, had $250 million for Planned Parenthood. And it's, it's breathtaking uh, what this means for unborn children. Well, uh, that was very... Um, offensive to my conscience to tell me that I had to participate in this and uh, to uh, pay uh, even a small amount of money in the beginning for the support of abortion. So I wrote this in a letter that went to uh, 250,000 people. I doubt if it got anywhere near the White House, but this is what I wrote. I believe in the rule of law, and it's been my practice since I was in college to respect and honor those in authority over us. It's my desire to do so now. However, this assault on the sanctity of human life takes me where I cannot go. I will not pay the surcharge for abortion services. The amount of the surcharge is irrelevant. To pay one cent for the killing of babies is egregious to me, and I will do all I can to confront the government that lies to me about its intention and then tries to coerce my acquiescence with extortion. It would be a violation of my most deeply held convictions to obey what I consider to be the principles of Scripture. The Creator will not hold us guiltless if we turn a deaf ear 
to the cries of innocent babies. So come and get me, Mr. President, if you must. I will not yield to your wicked regulations. Thank you, everybody. Well, there's more to the story uh, because, as some of you are aware, the HHS regulations, despite those of us who protested vigorously, um, the regulations require nonprofit organizations like ours, Family Talk, and the Catholic Church uh, in its services, uh, and uh, other religious organizations to uh, be uh, required to offer um, abortifacients to its employees. Abortifacients can result in the death of babies. It's the morning after pill. It keeps an embryo from implanting often, and then that baby dies. And that is a little uh, embryonic human being that is put at risk here. And, uh, and I couldn't do that. Again, I couldn't do it. It's an extension of the same statement. But it's a mandate. And some unions and uh, churches, those that are commissioned as, as churches, uh, and others, a number, millions of people have been exempted from it. But for our organization and those like it, we were not religious enough. Uh, we're, I mean, I've given my life to the cause of Christ, or tried to, and yet the government did not recognize that with Family Talk and many others. Now, we're nonprofits. You're aware that Hobby Lobby has had the same problem and has uh, sued the government uh, in order to uh, avoid having to um, provide the, this, what they call contraception. Uh, we're not, I'm not opposed to contraception, just that which kills babies. That's before the Supreme Court now, but it doesn't apply to us because that's a for-profit company and we're non-profit. And uh, so we're going to have to pay a fine. You know what the fine is? It starts today. It would have started today. May 1st, $800,000 a year. And we would close our doors. It would mean the end of our ministry and many, many others because others are in the same boat. And so we sued the federal government, uh, Kathleen Sebelius and the Department of Health and Human Services and Obamacare sued for our constitutional religious liberty rights. And three weeks ago, a judge ruled in our favor and we won. We're very grateful for that. Uh, we had a conference call three weeks ago. Um, Bob McEwen is on our board to decide what to do because the judge hadn't issued a ruling yet. And, uh, and so these fines were to start today. And our board voted unanimously to not pay it and to just take the consequences. And now we don't have to, at least with this preliminary ruling, which may be appealed to the Tenth Circuit, but it's a lot stronger legal case than uh, you might think. It's not just a matter of one judge, and we think that we're going to be relieved of that responsibility. Folks, I'm here to tell you, keep fighting. We can win. <laughs> And, and keep praying.
because that's what really made the difference here. All right, Shirley just came up and whispered to me that uh, the man that I am uh, to introduce has to leave for a vote, and he is Congressman Mike McIntyre, a uh, Democrat from uh, North Carolina. He's in his ninth term. That means 18 years he's been in the Senate, and he has been a standout congressman. I appreciate this man and what he has stood for. He's a senior member of the House Agricultural Committee and uh, of the Armed Services Committee. He also was given an award, I like this one, as the All-American Hero Award for work on behalf of veterans. And he has to leave for a vote. Congressman, where are you? There, would you uh, come up and address it? <laughs> 